The rupee hit a fresh historical low today with the dollar index touching a fresh 20-year high of 108.2. But let's uh, emphasize on the point that the rupee has fared better than other emerging market currencies. The Indian currency has stumbled 6.6% this year against the dollar, while Taiwanese dollar has slipped nearly 8%. So now to boost the rupee, the RBI has been announcing a bunch of uh, measures. Last week, it allowed banks to pay higher uh, interest rates on uh, foreign currency. That was a move that came in last week. And, uh, you know, that was on uh, foreign currency deposits. Also yesterday, the RBI announced steps to internationalize the rupee. Let's head across to Anand Adhikari to explain to us how this uh, new measure by the RBI is likely to impact the currency. Ava, I really don't see any immediate impact of these measures. Now let's look at each of these measures. You know, the RBI has freed up you know, the interest rate cap on foreign currency deposit. They have also exempted you know, the CRR and the SLR requirement on such deposit. But banks are already flushed with funds. Uh, you know, with trade growth in the economy is still in single digit. The RBI has also allowed more choices to foreign investors, you know, to invest in GSEC and the corporate debt market. Here again, you know, when the interest rates are rising globally, uh, these foreign investors have better uh, you know, opportunity to invest in their home market uh, without any currency risk. RBI has also, uh, in a way, you know, doubled the ECB uh, limit for corporate uh, you know, from 750 million US dollar uh, you know, to almost uh, 1.5 billion. Now, corporates in India are also dearly rich. I mean, they are sitting on gas. Uh, we are yet to see, you know, private capital is happening in the economy. So the expansion in the capacity is not happening. So why will they borrow money now? RBI just did a move of an, uh, allowing, uh, you know, settlement of international trade in rupee uh, is a good move. Uh, but this will take time. Uh, you know, the immediate worry, uh, uh, you know, is the foreign you know, investors pulling out money, you know, from the Indian market. The global interest rate are rising. You know, the import bill is rising because of uh, higher global you know, commodity prices. Uh, you know, the current account deficit, I mean, it is expected to almost double, you know, to US dollar 100, uh, you know, billion in 2023. Uh, so I, I see, you know, a lot of pressure building up, you know, on rupee uh, in the coming weeks. So how will these steps work? Will countries accept rupees in exchange for their imports? Joining us now, Mahindra Jaju, CIO Fixed Income, Mirai Asset uh, Investment Managers. Uh, Mahindra, thanks for joining us. Uh, take us through the implications of uh, this new measure announced by the RBI. So this is a good uh, progressive step. Uh, at this point, although the acceptance of the rupee as the settlement currency for the exports or imports will be not very high, but then uh, the start has to be made somewhere. And given the current situation, specifically where there is a huge oil import and other commodities import, specifically when there's a government to government dealing this mechanism may help so that may get an early boost with the government to government trades and over a period of time the general importers and exporters may also come on board this system sure so take us through the implementation the consequence of this move uh, you know how how it's likely to uh, to be implemented and uh, uh, you know the kind of detailed impact it's going to have now, I think implementation is pretty straightforward. There isn't too much of a challenge. Uh, as long as there is an interest from the, uh, you know, counterparties from the other countries to settle in rupee, then uh, the implementation is not much of a challenge. The most important part of this whole chain of the transaction is for a foreign bank to open a special rupee Vostro account. Uh, like right now, when the Indian uh, Indian establishments are importing or exporting, they open a Nostra account with a foreign correspondent bank. So in the reverse uh, settlement mechanism, a foreign bank, the foreign, the bank of the country of the origin of export, for example, will have to open a Vostra account with the Indian bank. Okay. So as long as they are willing to settle the trade in rupee, I think in terms of the implementation, there is no major logistical challenge. That should be straightforward. All right. So what about the monetary policy, Mahindra? Because uh, uh, it could potentially make it a little uh, tougher on monetary policy. What do you think? Not really from a monetary policy perspective, mm. because uh, ultimately, even if the trade is settled in the rupee, let's say mm. we are importing uh, a machinery from abroad, sure. uh, then the payment will still have to be made in dollars. The only implication of the reversal of the mechanism is that earlier 
the local person who is importing will have to find the dollars and then pay to the exporter of the other country now he will settle in the rupee mm. and the other person will have to sell the rupees in the global market and buy dollars because he is not going to keep the rupees for his purpose so the demand pattern will somewhat reverse it will obviously be help uh, in terms of the rupee stability uh, but then uh, at, from a monetary policy perspective it mm. it is not uh, you know materially different from importing in dollars or importing in rupees just the currency risk shifts from the importer to the exporter of the other country and to that extent uh, there is going to be somewhat less pressure but then again he is going to have to buy dollars by selling rupees so so i i don't think it it establishes rupee as the brand rather than having any serious or meaningful implication for the monetary policy that's how i understand it